Uh, my name is Ryan Flynn. I am the Worshipful Master of Ancient York Lodge, number 89 in Nashua, New Hampshire. I'm a member of the York Rite, uh, Knights Templar. Um, I am also the Ambassador to New Hampshire for the Association of Masonic Arts and a Masonic Artist. Um, I was artistic ever since I could remember. I was always someone who doodled with crayons as a kid and came up with drawings and little knickknacks. Um, I was fortunate enough to go to a high school where they really pushed the arts on me and realized that I had some talent, so I was kind of pushed harder than the other people there. And fortunately, I was able to work in different mediums, so I got hands-on experience in stained glass, uh, wood cutting, um, drawing, sculpture, painting. Um, pretty much anything you can think of I was able to try and kind of figure out what my fortes were in. Yes, in new November of 2012 uh, I was put on the spot in a way where I could produce my own Masonic art for the first time. Uh, the Nashua, New Hampshire Masonic Temple needed some fake stained glass windows to be designed and they had reached out to someone who wasn't a mason to come up with a design and they were, for lack of a better word, boring and unoriginal. Um, the powers that be and a, a brother in my lodge got my name in front of the person who was making those decisions and I was given a month to design these windows and um, after the month I came up with what are now known as my Nashua Masonic windows and the, they were instantly popular and people were commenting on Facebook and sharing it from all over the world and that's how my Masonic artist career started. Uh, which one of my works is my favorite? It's actually pretty easy. Uh, last year actually at Masonicon, I unveiled uh, my painting called The Endurance of Sophia. Um, that's probably my favorite work. Uh, one, because I think uh, for my skill set it was the most challenging, but I liked how it came out the way. I worked very hard on painting in a new style to get what, what uh, turned out to be that painting. Um, also, it was a completely original concept, original pose. Um, it, it was right from my head, so the symbolism that was in her woven with the figure and the scenery all became very apparent um, to anybody who knows a thing or two about esoteric schools of thought and um, it's very rare for me to produce something when I finish it I go that's the way I wanted it to come out and that was that was that painting I, I can't improve on it anymore it's it's exactly how I wanted to do it um, again uh, it turned out to be one of my more popular ones people buying prints and stuff like that so uh, definitely Sophia is, is my favorite. So the painting that I did titled In Thy Name We Have Assembled is a painting that's actually very close to me and I know close to a lot of friends and brothers from New Hampshire. Um, it was painted from a photograph that was taken at an installation in my lodge of the Grand Chaplain Max Jenis who has since passed. Um, and I, I, was, I loved the way the light looked in the photograph because it was symbolic in and of itself. The, the light was coming from above, reflecting off the, the Bible and hitting him in the face. And I thought that's, that's, that's a story in its, of itself right there. Um, and it's also kind of set up that Baroque style of, of lighting where you have intense dark uh, places and then the source of light illustrating the scene. Um, so when I, when I finished it, it was, it was touching. I actually got to give a print of that to Max uh, before he passed. Um, and I have actually reached out to the Grand Lodge of New York because I plan on donating it uh, after this year. 
um, I didn't realize it, but this year is going to be a very busy year for Masonic artists, and a lot of people have requested showings for that. So uh, my art's going to be on tour for the remaining of the year, and then when we're done, that will find its final home at the Grand Lodge in New York. So at uh, Masonicon this year, uh, I will be unveiling uh, my two St. John's. So I have two three by two uh, foot paintings, uh, one of John the Baptist and John the Evangelist, which I haven't shown publicly outside. Well, I've shown it in my lodge, but um, John the Evangelist hasn't seen the light of day yet. So um, they actually are spoken for already. I'm donating them to my lodge uh, as a thanks for being elected master. Uh, but prints will be available of it and I'll be doing a limited edition series of those. Uh, I also have new works from a recent book that I illustrated. I did some woodcut style pen and ink drawings uh, based around the life and times of George Washington. They haven't been available yet and they won't be until Masonicon so that will be the first time people can buy prints of those as well. I also have prints of other things that are pretty popular. I'm down to only 15 or 20 series of my Codex series uh, left before that I end before I end them. So those will be there, and hopefully those will be the last I ever have to gild those because they take a long time to do. So Masonic patents. Uh, when I was in college studying art history, uh, you had to take history of graphic design. And one of the things that you go over is the uh, illuminated documents of the Middle Ages, which I always found fascinating. And illuminated documents are basically hand-drawn pages that include illustrations and text, not always, but um, they're all hand-done. And usually they have gold leaf or silver leaf or other uh, metals or jewels worked into them that make them look like they're illuminating from a reflecting light. And I thought I always wanted to do that. And Masonic Patents gave me the opportunity to actually come up with original designs that incorporate this style. So I started doing them and they became more and more popular. In fact, every mason that goes that is raised in Ancient York Lodge, I donate one too so that they um, have something special uh, after the raising because I when I went through my degrees you know we go through it and they say this is such a great accomplishment and congratulations this is you know a big deal and then you get handed a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy and you're like okay great I mean not that I didn't appreciate it but I thought well I can make this a lot better I want to make something really stick in the mind so I came up with a few different designs um, I have my original one which I really don't push anymore because it was the first one I did and it, it was good but it wasn't good enough. I came up with my Regis patent which I probably my favorite one uh, because it works the reason I call it the Regis patent is it works the Regis poem into the border if you look at it very small it's very very small lettering and then there's a couple of scenes that come right from our degrees which I think came out pretty good. Uh, I have a Celtic one, which is all Celtic knots and, and symbols. And finally, I have one called the Ancient York, um, which is not made, it, I made it for my lodge, but any lodge can get them. And basically, the, what sets that apart from the others is most patents say, congratulations, you're a Mason, we acknowledge this. The Ancient York actually charges the person to continue being a Mason and continue down the path that you've started. So instead of us writing the name and giving it to him and signing, he has to sign his own name as a commitment to continue on the path of masonry, which kind of means a little bit more in my opinion. So um, they've been very popular uh, and anybody can order them as long as they're in a lodge that's recognized by my Grand Lodge. And um, they come in different varieties and different kind of levels. You can have print only ones, you can have prints that are hand accented and accented with uh, gold and silver and then I actually have a completely authentic hand one done that's done on hand handmade vellum uh, 24 karat gold it's it's pretty cool when you make one of those because it's done pretty much the same way it was done 500 years ago so what's on deck uh, I'm, I'm at an interesting part 
of my Masonic career, uh, uh, Masonic artist career, I should say. Um, I'm in the East right now, so things are probably going to die down realistically for the next year and a half. Um, but I have a lot of things planned out. I always carry a sketchbook with me, um, and I come up with ideas. And truth be told, I kind of want to walk away from the patents a little bit because they're very time consuming. And I want to get back into creating actual Masonic art, original works of art. Um, I've been commissioned to do more and more, uh, portraits, which I love doing because I think it's an amazing gift for a lodge for a brother. Um, the idea of giving a lodge a gift in honor of someone as opposed to giving that person a gift is, is a concept I, I think means a lot more. Uh, the idea of gifting something to the lodge in honor of someone as opposed to giving that person a gift is a concept that uh, has kind of died out of the arts for a little bit and I think it's more important and more memorable to do things that way. In other words, if you have someone who's, say, been chaplain for 30 years, uh, giving him a certificate saying congratulations on being chaplain for 30 years is one thing. He's going to get the certificate, he's going to love it, he's going to bring it home, he's going to put it on his wall 20, 30 years down the road when he passes away, his wife or widow will put it somewhere and it will be kind of forgotten eventually. It's a sad state of affairs, but if a lodge were to say commission a painting of him as chaplain or uh, a rendition of a prayer that he always does and put it in the lodge in his honor, that gift is now not only for that person, it's for the entirety of the lodge and it can be used as motivation and, um, and recognition of that brother's accomplishment. That, that kind of thought process has been lost, I think, and it needs to come back. And uh, the reason I do Masonic art is to kind of bring back this kind of thought process and this kind of love of the arts, which Masonry used to have, but it's since basically passed. That's a tough question. I've, I've traveled quite a bit with masonry and seen a lot of very good speakers. Um, there's so many I could mention. Um, you know, the first Masonic speaker, I guess, to say that really inspired me was, is, was our district education officer, Jack Cannon, who pretty much is the reason why I stayed a mason. Um, I was on my way out and then he, got, he, without question, motivated me to stay and kind of opened my eyes. Uh, he has since passed. Um, traveling around the country, I mean, Robert Hurd did a fantastic presentation. Um, he, he had this saying that a ship in the harbor is always safe, but it's not what a ship's meant to be. Kind of took that one to heart a little bit. It took me a couple of weeks to kind of realize what he was saying and definitely re am reminded of that in my, uh, in my art. Um, Brother Oscar Allen did a couple of phenomenal, uh, presentations. Uh, he's actually coming to Masonic on this year. Um, there's so many I can think of. It's um, Brother Sean Iyer. He, he, he has a very academic approach to uh, presentations and they're, they're riveting when you listen to him. Uh, I know I'm forgetting a lot of people, but I've, I've, there's been a lot of really good speakers out there that are, they're showstoppers. As, as Ben Wallace and North Carolina would say that they're rock stars, Masonic rock stars. Masonic memorabilia. I've actually tried to stay out of it as much as possible. I've collaborated behind the scenes a little bit and I, I'd be willing to do that on certain occasions. Um, as you were saying, there's there's been an influx of Masonic memorabilia and shirts and keychains and anything and everything that you could put a square and compass on. Um, there's certain masons out there that you can look at and you can see that they're doing it for the right reasons. Uh, that there's uh, a love of the craft into their products and that they're doing it to honor the craft. And then unfortunately there's a lot more brothers are out there who are trying to make a buck and they produce stuff where the square and compass isn't the great lights of masonry, it's a logo. And I don't like that. And 
it's very hard to judge the mindset of the people creating it. Uh, I think you can usually do it by quality. Um, if it's cheap, it, it's cheap. Um, but as for me, I've tried to stay away from it as much as possible unless a special situation presents it, situation presents itself. And one of the big reasons I do, and it's also why I'm not a full-time Masonic artist, is if I decided to go full-time, my wife, my kid, future kids, rely on that income to live. And if I have to sell, I'm gonna make stuff that sells. And sometimes making stuff that sells doesn't really equal making art. And that's what I think I'm here to do. So if I have to put myself in a position where I have to sell a thousand dollars to pay my rent and I can do it by selling Masonic underwear, eventually it's gonna happen where, and by no fault of their own, you have to pay your bills. And I've tried to keep myself as a part-timer for that very reason, because by doing it part-time and having a day job, I can produce stuff that I want to do and keep it at a level that has the respect of Freemasonry that I want. Now that being said, like as, you know, as we said before, if someone comes up to me and presents a project where I feel that the respect is there and that the outcome is, is good, by, by all means I'm going to help out. I, I can't wait to jump on it. But for right now, a, a, I have the liberty of being a very, very selective in those kind of projects. Uh, where do I see my art going in the future? Um, where do I, where do I see it, or where do I want to see it? I, I have a couple of dreams of what I want to do. Um, I'd like to see myself doing more portraits, just because of what we were talking about earlier. I think they're a fantastic way to honor brothers, uh, and more commissions. And that seems to be kind of picking up, which is awesome. Uh, lodges are contacting me about potential uh, commissions for their lodge, whether it be portraits or scenes. Like uh, I did the contrition of the ruffians for a lodge down in Arkansas, which, uh, which is amazing to have a lodge want to put that time and money into uh, something to better their lodge building, which is fantastic. So uh, where do I see myself down the road is doing more stuff like that, kind of getting away from, I hate to say it, the patents and, and the gifts to individuals and work more towards the gifts with lodges. For dreams, uh, I got a ceiling in my lodge that needs a painting. And I want to do it so bad, and I don't know if it'll ever happen just because of how much work it is. But I, one day I just want to do murals in a lodge and just have a lodge room and just say go to town. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get that anytime soon with the state of masonry right now uh, as a whole, but hopefully 10, 15 years, 20 years down the road when I've hopefully made a name for myself, uh, I'll get that opportunity because uh, that would be a dream. Well, aside from Masonicon, <laughs> um, you can find my art at ryanjflynn.com. Uh, you have all my contact information there. I have a very active Facebook page. Uh, you can see me live paint for once in a while if you're really into watching literal paint dry. Um, and I'm on Twitter and some other stuff too, so and LinkedIn. So if uh, if you need to find me, I'm out there, it's easy to find. And um, even if you're not looking for a commission, you're looking for advice or idea pitching, you know, that's what I'm here for. Reach out to me and I'd be happy to help.